Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight, and it's May Day, 2014. Here are top stories. Tonight, the Justice Department launches covert sanctions against gun owners. Then, agents of the state investigate a homeschooling family. And a look at what happens when a good guy has a gun. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. We're not turning our guns in, and we're not running, and we're not backing down. If you want to come and take them. Well, our top story tonight is Eric Holder and his Justice Department again using dirty tricks to forward their agenda. Now, we've seen this over and over again, but now they're going after individual businesses and doing it covertly. But let's first look at a couple of incidents that came to light today. First of all, here in Houston, Max Slavo said, look at what happens when a good guy has a gun. A Houston, Texas woman was recently leaving a retail store with her children. She was jumped by two individuals or dragging this woman along in the car and a guy with a gun, a good guy, a responsible citizen, stops this. Now we've been told over and over again by the Detroit police chief, by many others, that of course, what you know is that the police cannot be there all the time. So when someone is there that's responsible, they can help the citizens, they can stop the crime. We see this frequently. Now of course, these people were also driving a stolen vehicle, had drugs, and were snatching purses stopped by an armed citizen. Look at this Supreme Court case, however, that is now coming up tomorrow for consideration by the Supreme Court. They've taken a look at this twice in April, considering where they're going to hear this case. They may hear this third case about the right of people to keep and bear arms, what that exactly means, as if we needed clarification. Now, we've had two major Supreme Court cases, Heller versus D.C. and McDonald versus Illinois, where they have looked at the right of individuals to own arms in spite of state and jurisdictional regulations in the District of Columbia, now they're saying, but yeah, you can own guns, but you can't take them out of your home. Now, this is being brought up in New Jersey because of two egregious cases. Look at these cases. The first was Jeffrey Muller. Now, he's a business owner. He had been kidnapped and beaten in a case of mistaken identity. He then applied for a concealed carry permit, and the people in New Jersey said, no, you can't have one. We don't think you really need it. Now, they eventually relented, so he was replaced as plaintiff by another fellow. Look at this guy. His business is restocking ATMs in the middle of the night with large quantities of cash. They say he drives from location to location, scurries out to refill each machine, and then hurries to the next location, hoping to avoid being the target of a robbery or worse. Still, he applied for a concealed carry permit, even though the police chief in his town agreed with him, he was denied by the state of New Jersey very egregious. You do not have the right to keep and bear arms if they turn it into a privilege, of course. So this is the basis for the lawsuit as being reported by a new American. And we'll have to see what happens with this. It's being joined by Larry Pratt, Gun Owners of America, as well as the governor of Montana. And the Supreme Court will decide tomorrow, that is Friday, May the 2nd, whether or not they're going to hear this third case about gun rights. But regardless of what the law says, regardless of what the state law, the Constitution say, still the Obama administration, in particular Eric Holder, is hell-bent on taking away people's rights to own guns. Why? Because it's about much more than just protecting yourself against bank robbers. Now look at this article here from Kit Daniels. Justice Department launches a covert, covert sanctions against gun owners. They call it Operation Choke Point. They're trying to strangle businesses, and the way they're doing it is working with banks. This is a joint program between the Department of Justice, the FDIC, and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau targets what they call high-risk activities, and they include in that firearm sales, ammunition sales. They're linking those in with things like uh, scams and pornography and gambling. They're linking firearms and ammunition in with that, and of course, they're also putting in coin sales. They don't want people having real money to protect themselves against the bankers' uh, fiat currency. And they say federal law enforcers are targeting merchant categories, such as payday lenders, tobacco sales, and ammunition and firearms, not merely by pursuing those merchants directly. This is the key. Operation Choke Choke point is flooding payment companies that provide processing service to those industries with subpoenas civil investigative demands, and other burdensome and costly legal demands. And the, this has been brought to our attention by Michael Cargill of Central Gun, Texas Gun Works. He was rejected by BitPay, 
This is a Bitcoin provider because of these FDIC regulations. So we see yet another element of this, and that is that Bitcoin, which many people were hoping would be this independent free exchange, this is now, they're putting themselves voluntarily under the control of the banking system and applying these types of rules to Michael Cargill at Central Texas Gunworks. Now, also, we've had the CEO of the American Banker Association speak out against this, and he said, the Justice Department is pressuring banks to shut down accounts by pressing charges against merchants or even establishing, without even establishing, that the merchant broke the law. Exactly right. This is what we see happening over and over again. We just spoke yesterday. I had a report about the confiscation of assets, forfeiture, against people who are not even, they didn't commit a crime, they're not charged with a crime, they just take their assets. Now they're taking entire businesses, and they're doing it covertly, and they're working with the bankers. Now we also see the same type of thing happening, of course, across the spectrum, using bureaucracies, just as we saw in the Clive and Bundy Nevada Ranch standoff. He was concerned about the overreaching power grab, the violent intimidation and confrontation that he saw from the BLM agents. It was not about the grazing fees. He made that very clear. This transcended that civil dispute. And that was a point at which InfoWars got involved, was when they started using snipers, when they started getting violent with people in the area. And now we see this is happening, of course, at the border. We have a couple of stories that were picked up by the Drudge Report yesterday from McClatchy. The first one, as border security expands, complaints of abuse rise among Americans. Now, in this story, they talk about three particular lawsuits. One of them, first one, Chula Vista, California. Border Patrol agent is accused of leaping on the hood of a car, being driven by a mother of five, and shooting her dead. She, of course, is unarmed. Second case, another woman, Brownsville, Texas, violently pushed the, the customs agent, violently pushed this disabled woman to the ground, causing her to have a miscarriage the next day, and putting the handcuffs on her so tightly that they had to call firefighters to remove these handcuffs. Third case, a woman in El Paso, Texas, going across the border. She is singled out because they think she's carrying drugs. And they give her the same treatment that they gave the man in New Mexico at a stop sign, looking at her, uh, making her take laxatives, uh, watching her have a bowel movement, subjecting her to x-rays and scans, and then telling her that she has to pay for all of this. This is amazing abuse that we're seeing here at the border. And of course, they're doing this also to ranchers, many of whom have been in business like Clive and Bundy for 120 years. This is what they talk about what they're doing on their land, violent confrontations as well as abusive use of their property. Now, the report points out that they've boosted the size of the Border Patrol so quickly over such a short period of time that they're not doing, of course, any adequate border checks. And as the vice president of the Fraternal Order of Retired Border Patrol officers said, they've even hired illegal aliens. Now, why would they do that? I mean, that's almost like using Al-Qaeda in the War of Terror or drug lords in the War of Drugs. Um, that's right, they do all of that, don't they? Now, look at what's happening on these ranches, though. One of the ranchers said that he has agents aboard three-quarter ton pickups whizzing around 37 miles of private roads on his ranch around the clock. He said, we got 25 trucks a day doing the circuit, and he has to do maintenance, maintenance on it once a month to grade it or it gets rutted in corduroy, and he says they're destroying their fences. Now, one of the farmers there said that they ran into a couple of cows that belonged to him, and they refused to pay for it, so he kicked them out. Now, this is what's interesting. He said he was very surprised to find that when he kicked them out, he and his neighbors thought that he would have a big illegal immigration problem at that point. He said he doesn't. He doesn't have a problem. The 30% that he was spending to fix fences and roads, 30% of his budget, was due to damage by the immigration services. We have to know our rights. Frequently, these guys are quoted as telling the people that they stop, you have no rights. You do exactly as I say. That's not true unless Americans know what their rights are. We are continually going to lose them. Now, coming up right after the break, we have a special report from Joe Biggs. He goes on the street and he asks American citizens questions to see whether or not they could even pass the citizenship exam. We'll be right back. I read an interesting article today that said most Americans wouldn't even be able to pass a naturalization test to become a U.S. citizen. 
I came out here to the Capitol today to see if I could ask a few questions and find out whether or not that's true. Do you know what the supreme law of the land is? No. Uh-oh. No. You don't know what the supreme law of the land is? No, I don't. Treat each other well. It should be. Um, I don't know that. No. What is it? I know what it should be. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that, that's, that's for another debate. No. Excuse me, sir. Do you know what the supreme law of the land is? No. No, no, no. He does not. <laughs> Sorry. We got a meeting. Do you know who the vice president is? Are you an American? The Constitution. No, I do not. Um, have fun. Be happy. Supreme law of the land. Uh, do unto others as they do unto you. I don't know. <laughs> Freedom and liberty. What do you think? First Amendment. Yeah, rights to all. I do not know. <laughs> do you know? Uh... Is it the right to... Is it the right to... Bear arms? No, <laughs> no. That's like the Second Amendment. Yeah. Uh, liberty, something in the pursuit of happiness. Is that that? It just sounds like a catchphrase. A catchphrase? The supreme law of the land? Oh. Do you know who wrote the Declaration of Independence? Uh-oh. Can't think of his name right now. Uh uh, Thomas Jefferson and a couple other guys that I couldn't name off the top of my head, but I know it was more so than just him. Um, Thomas God. Jefferson. Besides Thomas Jefferson? <laughs> <laughs> um, Thomas Jefferson. The forefathers. What is the name of our national anthem? The name of our national anthem? Yes, sir. The name? God bless America. Okay. I know that. I mean, do you want me to sing it for you right now? No. Uh, the Star Spangled Banner? Um, oh god, that's a good question. <laughs> These are all things that we're supposed to know. Uh, it is the Star Spangled Banner. A global info war is underway with our minds. Recent studies from Harvard show human beings are getting dumber and weaker. Fluoride is dumped into our water supply daily. Geoengineering projects are happening all over the world while planes dump chemicals into the atmosphere. Vaccinations are causing illness and developmental problems. GMOs affect our food supplies at an alarming rate. And all this is done by design to reduce population and make us slaves for the new world order. No wonder people can't answer questions about their own country. On what day was the Constitution of the United States adopted? Um... 19 something, I don't know. Seven, 70, 76, I think. <laughs> what day was it adopted? Yeah, it's not. You're it's trying to trick us. Yeah, now. July 4th, 1776. Am I going to be that guy? I'm you gonna, already I'm are. <laughs> On what date? July 4th, 1776. It wasn't the 4th. I forget. 4th of July? What year? 1776. When we say the Pledge of Allegiance, what do we show loyalty to? To the flag of the United States of America. And? To the republic for which it stands. I guess the United States of America and the, the flag. Uh, goodness sakes. Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America. Uh, either the flag or the country. The flag. And? and God. Okay. Do you know who the father of our country is? George Washington. No. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. No idea. George Washington? I think it's George Washington. No. No, no, no. He does not. <laughs> Sorry. George, uh, George Washington. What do we call the first ten amendments of the Constitution? Um, the... Ten Amendments of the Constitution, the con like your rights or something? What, what? The first ten amendments of the Constitution, what do we call that? The Constitution.